Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us on Time Slip, a show where we slip around in time. Today, we have an amazing guest, Stephen Travers. He's one of the leading lights of Haven Inn. I've said for some time, if I wanted to train in Haven Inn, I would jump on a plane, pop over to Dublin and do it for Stephen. Although I do get the feeling he's going to be doing it in many other places as well. I haven't told him that yet. Um, I would appreciate you liking this and sharing it. Let's, let's spread the word because... You know, there's so many trainings out there, and a lot of them are a bit half-baked, and I know Hayden is, is one of the most credible out there. So, Stephen, welcome. Hi, Anne. How are you keeping? <laughs> I'm really good. Yeah, I'm really good. So, one of the things I wanted to of ask course. you, jumping right in. Um, yeah. Before Havening, what was you doing? Uh, I was, a, well, essentially, I used hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Uh, right. in pri private practice in Dublin for just under 15 years and very much immersed in the field of personal development. Uh, mm. work. So I, I trained in lots of different areas, a, a bit like yourself, I imagine. You know, so hypnotherapy, NLP, EFT, TFT, the Demartini technique, uh, various types of psychotherapy. So that's what I've been doing over the last 15 years and running my private practice in Dublin and doing some other uh, training events as well. I used to teach a little bit of NLP uh, many years ago as well. So that's so what I've been kind of, So you're really focusing on yeah. Havening. Uh, so why, why, are you focusing, why are you doing so much with Havening as opposed to, opposed to, to the other? I mean, I know you still incorporate them and use them, but... Yeah. Havening seemed to be a real biggie for you. So what what made you sort of bring it up to be, um, what drew you to Havening and make it such a focal point in your work? Well, well first of all, I was reading an interview about six years ago with uh, Paul McKenna. And mm. Paul McKenna said he had discovered this uh, new therapy that he believed was going to change the face of how uh, therapy is done across the world especially in the area of anxiety-based disorders and trauma. Mm. So that, that really got me, that drew my attention when he came out with that. So I started researching it and uh, I came across the Rudens, uh, Dr. Ronald and Stephen Rudin, got in contact with them. They were only starting the trainings and uh, I ended up doing one of the very first trainings. But the big thing that grabbed me was the results havening was producing and the speed of the results like i remember doing my first havening my first one ever i had this uh, young girl come in lady she's about 18 years of age she was doing her leaving search or that'd be like the, an a level in the uk mm. and she was suffering with really severe panic attacks she'd had a really bad panic attack in an exam and mm. she was having problems going back in to do exams so the school was trying to accommodate or, you know, put her into a room by herself or in a small group, but it wasn't working. She kept uh, having anxiety and panic attacks in those exam environments. Mm. So she came in, first session, you, you know, I just learned havening and there was many things I could have done with her. So I, obviously I decided, look, I, I'm going to use the havening with her. We identified quite quickly when she had the very first panic attack in the exam. Uh, so I have in that memory an event. Uh, she, mm. she was really distressed about it, and with under ten minutes, the anxiety and panic had completely disappeared. Uh, wow. There was a big transformation from someone who was sitting there completely distressed to someone who's completely calm and relaxed within ten minutes. And after that one session, she was absolutely fine. She could go and do the exams, and yeah, everything was great for her. So. Um, I've been seeing those results consistently uh, with Havening, and I suppose that was one of the main things that, that drew me to it, was the results, and then the neuroscience behind it as well it, it impressed me. Well, I know, I know obviously, Ronnie Rudin, I've never met Stephen Rudin, but Ronnie Rudin, yeah. I did with him a few years back, and he's one of the nicest people I've ever met, yeah. but he's also really credible. I mean, he's a New York psychiatrist, he's, you know, he's qualified up to the hill and he the science has been verified from what i gather the science uh, behind it has been verified from what i gather it's been taken into universities it's been tested out but as you mm. say you use it on somebody and you see a dramatic change i saw you work on somebody at carl smith's and the woman was like yeah it's gone yeah 
<laughs> it was just, you know, you you could see you could see it, everything about her. The bit that gets me is when you can see they're looking for it and they can't find it anymore. Do, do you know what I mean? There's this point where they're not just saying, "Oh yeah, I feel better because they're in front of people." They're kind of looking for it and it's not there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, well, yeah. When they're looking for the feeling or even the memory, there, there's often significant changes. As in, they can't get the negative feeling back anymore; it's gone, and the memory will often seem more distant or uh, faded away. Mm. Uh, there's no way in NLP the one of the techniques to use is with some modalities, they aim to get pictures and images and sound and to push them further away in the distance yeah, to disassociate. Yeah. Well, mm. after you hit someone successfully, those submodalities shift automatically and they can't bring the image and the feeling back the same way, no matter how hard you try. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting because I, I, I didn't know it, uh, I didn't know it changed submodalities, but I could see that woman couldn't, couldn't find it. I could see she was sort of like, no, you could. You, I could see her doing that, trying to see where it was. Christopher's asking, "What is the sign behind my head?" It says, "Not all those who wander are lost." I like that because I know a lot of wanderers. I know a lot of people who wander through life and they don't care. It's good fun. <laughs> so, um, so you, so you're teaching this now. Where, where do you teach? Uh, well, we've been running trainings in the UK, Ireland, then we have trainers in the US. So I do a lot of my trainings in Dublin. Yeah. Um, so we run the two day Havening Techniques training. And I've been doing them for the last five years. I do at least uh, uh, one or two a year. Brilliant. I, I, I mean, you've got plans because I, in my head, I'm seeing you take it to other places. I'm seeing you crossing water. So, have you, have you, are you planning that, or is that something still to come? Interestingly, yeah, there are a couple of projects in the pipeline. There, there there's a book in the background, being groomed in the place, and obviously, Havening is uh, constantly expanding, growing, and evolving. So, yeah, there's a there's a few things in place. Those intentions are already set. Put it that way. Okay, so you said, yeah, well, I'm seeing it, so if I see it, it happens, um, if I get the image in my head. So, so what are the main things you use Haven in for? Uh, many things. Uh, first of all, anxiety-based disorders, things like panic attacks, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, phobias. Mm. Uh, people with, you know, built-up accumulation of, of stress from just day-to-day -day living, uh, unresolved negative emotions like unresolved anger, rage, guilt, shame. Uh, we also use Havening to help people overcome compulsions, cravings, addictive behaviours, uh, mm. to build resourceful states, uh, you know, states of confidence, uh, calmness, resiliency, and also to help modify their behaviour uh, in regards to, once again, changing, I suppose, negative behavioural patterns they may have. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's many things we, we use it for, and uh, we can even combine it and integrate it in with various different therapies and coaching models also. Uh, do, the, do the rodents mind you incorporating it into other things? Uh, well, they're all for it. Like, Havening oh, has evolved. Yeah, they've evolved, it has evolved a lot in the last five, uh, six years. Uh, so. We're finding new ways of using it, new ways of integrating it in with other modalities uh, to, uh, to obviously what we wanted to achieve even better outcomes and results for our clients and the people we're, we're working with. So th there's a lot going on uh, within the Haven community and we've a lot of different people from medical doctors, um, yeah. you know, EMDR trainers, NLP people, hypnotherapists, psychotherapists, counselors mm -hmm. involved and they're all helping to uh, I suppose naturally evolved Havening as well with, with all their background and knowledge also. Yeah, so that's interesting because most um most most people have got a modality, don't like any other modality near it. They're quite precious. So I've not ever heard, come across anybody being open that that way uh before. So that's really maybe I maybe I should have a chat to them at some point. But um yeah, that's really interesting because that doesn't usually happen. People are usually quite precious or a yeah. bit nervous about anything um, coming near their modality. And that's, really, they, yeah, that's good because, you know, I think most therapists do use several things when they work on somebody. And, and 
you know, it's, it's, that, it's that synergy effect that you can create something really, really powerful with it. Yeah, like Herdling works great as a as a standalone set of techniques, mm, mm, uh, mm. but we can also integrate. We all, we often say that Herdling, if you add it to a lot of modalities, it can enhance the other modalities. Like mm, Paul McCann, mm. for example, uses Herdling quite a bit, uh, mm. where he uses NLP techniques and hyp hyp hypnotic techniques in with the Herdling. Yeah, and yeah. what we're finding, what I'm finding, is that's actually enhancing those techniques. And we yeah. go into more detail why that happens within the trainings we do. We teach people what's actually happening in the brain. We go more into the neuroscience to explain uh, why that can be so effective. So, so what is the science behind havening? Because I know there is science, but I've, I've never really look at looking. I very rarely look into that side. What is the science behind it? Well, first of all, there's a lot of a lot of science behind it, mm. but to, I suppose to give you um, a snapshot of one of the reasons why it's so successful with clearing anxiety-based disorders is, first of all, when someone develops an anxiety-based disorder, there's generally, as we all know, been a very distressful event. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and there's often, they're, they're going to have a sense or a perception that they're trapped or they can't escape in some way, a sense of inescapable stress. Mm. At that moment, now this is the science part, something called amporeceptors get encoded or stuck on little neurons in the amygdala. So think of my hands as a little neuron, these little spikes or receptors getting get stuck there. And they download everything that you're seeing, hearing, and emotionally, physically, uh, feeling in that moment. So mm. anxiety, stress, heart palpitation, swelling, all that gets downloaded and coded. Right. So the, event, the event's over, you're fine, you're, everything's okay, but these receptors are stuck and they sit inside the neurons. If something reminds you of that original distressful event, it could be a smell, it could be something that looks similar, a similar sound, it has the potential to trigger these receptors off again and once yeah. these receptors trigger, they, they release cortisol and adrenaline and bring back uh, some, if not all, of the distressful uh, anxiety uh, symptoms. <laughs> so, what in Haven, what we're doing is we're, we teach people to pinpoint and identify these key events. Uh, we uh, get them to think about them, imagine them. So, we trigger the receptors off in the anxiety, then we apply the Haven. Uh, yeah. Having is a psychosensory treatment, so we use sensory touch and pleasant psychological distraction. Yeah. And essentially, what makes it work, what makes it really effective, is the delta waves from the sensory touch go into the neurons with the receptors and helps to remove the receptors off. And once that happens, it switches off the stressful uh, feeling from the fr uh, to the body. It's delinking the feeling. Uh, from the thought or the memory or the triggers. So, so where you'd, um, I, I know a friend of mine, her sister walked in the room. My friend was quite a strong character. She hadn't seen us. And her elder sister walked in the room and you saw her start to shake because the sister bullied her as a child and it stayed in her all those years. So years later, she was 30 years old, but she was quaking when her sister walked in the room. That was that sort of reaction. It's embedded somewhere in her. We fired off the minute her sister, she sister couldn't hurt her, she couldn't bully her now, but she still had that reaction. So uh, we could have done havening on her and she'd have released that for the next time she saw her sister, she wouldn't have had that reaction. Is, is that kind of a nice, really strong point? Right, right. Yeah, that, that's a very good example. And if you're looking, if you can imagine looking inside someone's brain at their amygdala, mm -hmm. there's a very high probability that, that she obviously had uh, at least one distressful event, not many the stressful memories or events maybe around her sister and the bullying. Mm. So these receptors are encoded there and mm. the sister's associated in that. She's encoded, if you like. Yeah. And so if we go back to those memories with that lady and we clear them and we delink uh, that emotional charge from those memories mm. or talk, that stimuli her sister, when she sees her sister again, uh, there'll be very, once again, high probability that the feeling will be at least significantly reduced, if not completely gone. So, so, um, so say, would it work, say, not somebody's got a compulsion to eat, eat, say, chocolate, they've just, you know, they call themselves chocoholic, and they, 
they'll they'll kind of say, right, I'm not going to do it. I'm on a diet. I'm on a diet, and they they be just yeah. competing it. So, so it's the same sort of thing. The compulsion's embedded in the, in in here, and um, behaving in the take away the compulsion. Is that that how it works? Not exactly. Okay. It it, 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 it depends. Uh, you know, sometimes there's a lot of. Uh, accumulated unresolved accumulated stress that, that person's holding on to and then they're mm -hmm. self-medicating through yeah overeating they're having cravings uh, uh they're self-medicating essentially so we often ask the question well what's what is driving that addiction or that craving right. and sometimes you won't even work at, at with the craving directly at the beginning we'll look at unresolved trauma and other issues in their life and we'll start mm -hmm. clearing all that that stuff first and what that does that produces a resiliency that then makes it easier for the person to take control of that behavior or to stop it mm -mm -mm. at saying that we can directly have in the craving or the compulsion so someone say it's a real strong compulsion for chocolate we can rate it on a scale as zero to ten ten being the most zero being the least trigger off that compulsion and have in the compulsion for chocolate directly and that also can significantly reduce the craving and in some cases completely clear it or wipe us it, it depends what's driving the craving yeah, yeah but you don't always know do you you don't always know but i suppose if you get that compulsion and work with the compulsion uh, sometimes you don't need to know the origin or something you can work with the compulsion or the feeling of it i yeah. suppose to clear it yeah yeah and sometimes sometimes you, you know it's partly habit or it's more of a mild compulsion you could say it, it depends what's driving it because there's mm. no reason why people quit smoking to go to see a hypnotist and uh, mm. or to quit smoking themselves and then three six months later they're two or three stone overweight because yeah. okay they've gotten rid of the cigarettes but the, but if they were smoking because of unresolved stress and, and anxiety and other uh stressful triggers they mm. then turn to something else you know yeah. so we want to really address at that deeper level uh you know what's driving these behaviors and res and get a more i suppose complete result mm -hmm. the yeah so that else i wanted to ask and uh, i don't don't know if you can answer it but um i've had havening done on me uh several times and i've seen you havening at carl smith's thing and i i had a session with louise hi louise louise baker's here uh and with louise it was it was interesting because it's if there was more. I, I don't even know how to explain it. When she was working on me, she had this really, oh, guys, have a session with Louise if she's up for doing it. I know she's been stepping back lately for a study, but she's mm. doing it. She was working and she's kind of doing something more with energy. Um, I don't even know if you guys know you're doing it. I mean, you were working. There was, it's almost if you went into some sort of a state yourself. And I've noticed that with Louise. And I've had um, the same with a couple of people, and I didn't really feel much but it's almost if you guys go into a bit of state is there something going on there um or am i imagining things <laughs> uh i'd say no you're not you're not imagining it uh, yeah there, there is a couple of things going on like when we train people to do happening we teach them about you know coming from you know a healing place from a right. positive okay. intention uh you know so that can be very useful uh that you're coming from that place of positive intention and, and healing mm -hmm. uh secondly when the the person is doing the havening the certified havening practitioner when they're uh, applying the havening touch they're also getting delta waves produced yeah that, that, that makes touching. sense yeah i can see something happening with the person doing it oh yeah louise is saying the power of delta wave intent and focus because i can see the person do it not all of them some of them there's nothing and i don't feel anything and they've done it but when i session with louise i could i could really feel this something coming from her more than the technique and i saw that when you worked on that lady at the key s event and, and i just yeah it's interesting so, so you bring in sort of intention and yeah that's gorgeous i love that so but, but, um, but, can, I, but can i also say like a lot of therapies out there do talk about intention and mm. you know belief and expectation you hear those words a lot around hypnotherapy yeah, yeah. like i'm doing having this six six years i've done thousands and thousands of having treatments if you like and mm. i have 
done havenings where I I've been very mechanical about it. Yeah. It's very mechanical. And I have uh, got Garland to say the, the same uh, excellent results. Wow. Wow. I, yeah. I, from what I've heard, there is consistently amazing results with Havening. So, uh, but there's just something I've seen both of you two work where, I, I mean, I'm aware of energy. And there was an, yeah. it was as if you're something in you guys changed when you, it's almost as if I could, like when you, when you was uh, at KS event, I, it's almost as if, or you, your energy just got so much bigger. I could just feel it. It's almost as if you went into some really, sort of, I don't know how to put it. Really, um, it's like that. It's as, if, as if you'd created this. Uh, it's almost like a bubble of, of, of great energy. You know, it's almost as if I could feel you'd created something. So it's really, really nice. And when Louise worked on me, it's like, whoa, what? you know, there was something else going on, which I. Anyway, guys, do you, do you want to experience this? Um, uh, uh, Stephen's going to kind of take us through uh, uh, something. Um, uh, what, what is it you're going to do for us, Stephen? Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, I'd like to give everyone an experience of self havening with a technique I call from stress to success. Oh, wow. So, I'm so I'm going to ask everyone to. Uh, there's really two things we're going to do. We're going to look to clear up something in their past or something that they're feeling anxious or stressed about. Yeah. And then number two, we're going to look at a future goal or outcome that they'd love to achieve. Maybe a goal they've set for this year in an area yeah. of their health, their finances, their, their mm -hmm. business, their relationships. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do some havening around that as well, where they imagine that goal and stepping into it and really you know, fe feeling good feelings. Um, but the first part of it is going to be clearing some distressful, limiting feeling, um, maybe past memory. And we're going to do about three or four rounds of event havening, then move right into the, the positive future outcome or goal that, that they'd love to achieve. <laughs> so uh, there's a few things we're going to be doing. Uh, I'm going to be showing you the audience how to apply havening touch. Uh, which is gently stroking the shoulders from the top of the shoulder down to the elbow. And I'm just going to focus actually on the arms today, even though we can do the hands and the face, we'll just focus on the arms and we'll be using pleasant psychological distraction. Mm -hmm. I am going to ask everyone to give the uncomfortable feeling or stressful feeling a number on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being it, it's most uncomfortable and zero being completely calm, neutral. Mm -hmm. So I'd like everyone just to take a moment or two and think about, first of all, something that they'd love to achieve in the future, something they'd love to achieve this year, a goal or a positive outcome. So just take a moment and think about that or if you have a pen and piece of paper, write it down. Something you're working on already, something that's important to you. Something that you'd really love to achieve and actually make happen, manifest into reality mm -hmm. i've got both of them that's good you've got that okay and then i just want to give them one moment to think about something that they're feeling stressed about could be something in the past uh, it could even be something in the present something they're having uncomfortable feelings about that they're feeling maybe a bit anxious trapped uncomfortable i'm looking at it <laughs> okay do you have something yeah, I've got a part, my, my desk, it's, it's so much on there to do, and it's a mess, yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking, I'm here, but my desk is there, yeah, I've got it in front of me, so yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the audience, or whoever's listening, can also take something in their past, it could be a specific distressful memory or event that they'd like to shift. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are we ready? Mm -hmm. So I'd like everyone uh, just to take a moment and close their eyes and think about first of all the uncomfortable feeling memory or thought that things that that thing that's making you feel stressed pictures in your mind make the image big and bright any images or pictures associated really focus in on them any sounds focus in on them and notice what emotions negative emotions and feelings that are attached and i'm going to give you about 20 seconds to really go into to activate the amygdala 
go to the most distressful or uncomfortable aspect or part of that thought or memory. Notice on a scale of zero to 10, how high it goes. Go to the very worst part of it. Make it go as high as you can. Then open your eyes, to so open your eyes on and everyone, just look at me, put one hand on your right shoulder, one hand on your left shoulder, just crossing your arms and begin gently stroking from the top of your shoulder down to your elbow. Think of you're stroking an animal, a cat, or you're comforting a small child. So firm but gentle strokes. Keep doing that consistently throughout the technique. And now close your eyes and imagine walking out onto a beautiful beach on a bright summer's day. Picture a beautiful bright blue sky, yellow golden sand, the sand of waves lapping against a seashore. Like you're on a beautiful tranquil holiday and you can see the sunlight sparkling off the ocean waves. Just imagine that. And with every step you imagine taking on this tranquil beach, count out loud from one to 20 with every step you imagine taking. One, two, three, four, five, six. Relaxing with every step. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Imagine a few seagulls flying by. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now hum a little song as well. The distraction part is very good for getting the old negative thought out of your working memory. So let's hum happy birthday together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Very good. Just keep stroking. Take in a slow, gentle breath. And just keep stroking. We call this heavening touch. The stroking. This is flooding your brain with all these lovely delta waves and slowing your brain waves right down. It's also increasing serotonin, oxytocin, GABA, all these feel good neurochemicals. And then notice noticing on a scale of 10 to zero, what number are you at right now? Whatever number comes to mind, just become aware of it. Then I'd like everyone to count out loud backwards from 30 to zero in twos out loud, relaxing with every number. So I'll begin, 30, keep stroking, 28, 26, 24, 22, 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, keep stroking, 10, 8, Six, four, two, zero. Then I'd like everyone to hum a uh, twinkle star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what we Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, little star, how I wonder what we are. The distraction does seem a bit strange, but it really helps to displace the old memory out of something called your working memory. Now just keep stroke and take in a slow, gentle breath. Just keep stroking. Just relaxing as you breathe all the way out. And just notice that sensory touch, that feeling. Stroking in a calm, gentle way. And then notice, noticing on a scale of 10 to zero where you are right now. Just go with the first number that comes to mind. Then we're going to do one more round. 
of heavening on this and this time i'm going to ask everyone to imagine walking to walking into a beautiful park or a scene of nature maybe somewhere where, where you love to walk a nice peaceful place with trees maybe a river or a lake and it's a beautiful spring or summer's day begin to imagine that in your mind and as you walk through this beautiful park or landscape with every step you imagine taking as you keep stroking count out loud from one to twenty one two three four five six and imagine seeing what you see as you walk through this lovely land here it's a lovely spring summer there Every step you take causes you to relax. Good. Then let, let's home row, row your boat together. The song. Row, 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 gently dance. Merry, 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 Row, row, row your boat gently dance. Merrily, merrily, merrily. And taking a slow, gentle breath. Very good. Now, at this time, I'd like everyone just to keep stroking, but start thinking about your goal, that future outcome that you'd love to achieve. Begin to imagine it now in front of you and make the image or the scene big and bright, as if you can see yourself achieving that goal right in front of you, like a big movie screen. See the, the final positive outcome of you achieving that goal. Nah. Make it look exactly the way you'd like it to be, until it feels just right, until you feel a sense of inner inspiration and excitement and inner motivation to really achieve that goal. Just visualize it as best you can. And imagine floating up and out of your body and right into that positive future. And imagine stepping right into that goal, right into that final outcome, seeing what you'll see, imagine what you're seeing, what you're hearing and what you're feeling. Imagine how good that feels. You've actually achieved a goal. And imagine all the positive benefits it brings you and how important it is to you. And imagine that sense of achievement and well-being it gives you and how it changes your life. And over the coming hours and days, you can continue imagining this goal. You can continue self-havening like this. And every time you do, you can imagine this goal. Every time when you self-haven like this, you can imagine this goal. Every time when you self-haven like this, you can imagine this goal. And it gets even more clearer, brighter, and the positive feelings get even stronger. And you feel spontaneously inspired to achieve this goal and to align your thoughts, actions, and behaviors with the achievement of manifesting this goal. Now, as I count from one to five, number five, I'd like everyone to open up their eyes. They can take a little stretch if they wish, feeling much more calm, relaxed, and relieved. Now, starting at one, rising all the way up to two, taking the deeper breath at three, four, Five eyelids opening, fully aware. Take a little stretch if you wish, and just taking a moment to relax. So, wow. how are you yeah, it was really interesting. I mean, um, the stress thing uh, went down to I got 2.3, so that was really interesting. It was eight point something, so it went down to 2.3, so that was really nice. That's that felt. So, and when you're not stressed, you deal with stuff better, don't you? Um, yeah. yeah, that was really good. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice. 
Yeah. yeah and I'd, like, I'd like everyone now to actually who've done the process with us or if you're doing the process right now you just tuned into this video is to check and uh, yeah on the scale of 10 to 0 where you are on that old negative thought memory or feeling yeah uh, if it's not completely at a zero you can do a few more rounds of havening uh, yeah. on it with the distraction that often brings it down to a zero uh, when we're working with clients one to one if something doesn't drop completely to a zero there can be many reasons but it can often mean there's another memory or event or aspect of that mm -hmm. event that needs to be havened or looked or, or looked at or there could be even an earlier event that's associated to that to, to that actual negative feeling well, for me i didn't want it to go below 2.3 because i'm not i was i'm not going to clear my bloody office up am i <laughs> I'm just going to leave it as it is and just go out and leave it. I'm, I'm off up the pub, you know. So I, I need to have that little bit of... So, guys, yeah. um, if you've got any questions, um, Stephen, can you ask them now? And I'd love to know what, where was you on that scale and what did you bring it down to or did you, could you really visualise yourself? Um, yeah, give, give us some feedback. That would be really interesting. Yeah, I could really feel that. That was that was really nice. It's uh, my heart's a bit. It's a lot of... Uh, Rubbing, but yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's um, yeah, I feel yeah. different. I do feel different. I'm kind of um, I don't feel stressed about it. I mean, I genuinely don't feel stressed about it so much. You know, I'm just kind of a bit more. When you're not stressed, you deal with it straight away. My mind's going, yeah, but if I tackle that now, then a bit later I'll do that, and then I can clear that. And whereas before, I was just kind of a bit on overwhelmed with it, or I'm now now kind of seeing it a bit more logically. So it's kind of got rid of that yeah. overwhelm. Yeah, it helps to downregulate the stress. And as mm -hmm. you said, when you feel less stressed, you're, you're generally more resourceful, calm, or you can think more clearly. And you, yeah, you have to remember, this is just a taste of evening. I'm just giving you a yeah. small snapshot, just give you yeah. a little taste. Uh, because as you know, Anne, when someone havens you as well, it can be quite a different experience. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. No. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, tell me about training. How long is the training to be to, to be a havening practitioner? Okay. Well, we have a training coming up, and I'm delighted to say that we actually have Dr. Stephen Rudin coming all the way over from the US, the co-creator and developer of havening, to Dublin on the sixth and seventh of April of this year, which is when the training's on. Uh, so Dr. Rudin and myself are presenting the two days, uh, each day runs from about 9 to 6 p.m. Uh, it's going to be jam-packed full of live demonstrations, uh, us teaching you how to use all the havening techniques uh, for yourself, uh, friends, family, clients. Uh, it's very interactive. Uh, we'll, be covering, we'll, be, we'll be covering all the neuroscience as well, teaching you how to use havening to obviously overcome all the anxiety-based disorders and trauma uh, issues we talked about, how uh, to treat things like cravings, compulsions, build resiliency, confidence. Um, yeah, so th there's a there's a lot over that weekend. And it's it's an opportunity for people as well to come along if they have some own issues themselves to like to resolve as an emotional detox, uh, you, you could say. So that's the 6th and 7th of April in Dublin. We already have 50 people uh, booked in. So, wow! Wow! Yeah. That is a lot. Wow! That's amazing. It would be, be a big training. So yeah, sounds uh, brilliant. I mean, um, as I say, I can feel the difference. Great back up. Uh, Julie said um, down from eight to two. Quite a surprise. Feliciana said more details. Go to he Haven in Org. See, she's good at marketing. Good at yes. Yeah, Haven dot org is the official Haven website. So there's lots of great information there. Uh, there, there's videos, etc. So good place to go to heaven.org. Um, but but uh, afterwards, if you could um, put in the comments to this your details uh, and any promos you got for your training, anything. Uh, Feliciana said, Haven has changed my life. Uh, S. Chris Boo said, Thank you, I needed that. What else we got? Kate Piccioli. Wow, I haven't heard of this and it was brilliant. Thank you, Angela Gomez. Uh, Great, I've done a bit before, but really felt that. It was, yeah, so we've had some great, great feedback there. And I've, I've, I really enjoyed that. So that was amazing. But, um, uh, Demetha, hi, Demetha. Thanks for popping in. Um, yeah, I'd love you to post up your details because I, I can feel so, you know, to me, it's like 
I, I've been, I've, as you say, we get, we try different things. And there's a lot of things where I go, oh, yeah, and there's nothing happening. But I, I can actually feel something quite almost physical. I can actually feel myself going into a different space and something coming from the good people that do this. So, I, you know, that's why, why I asked if you'd come on because it's, it's very interesting. And I also think it's something about people are genuine. Like, as I say, I've met Ronnie Rood and I know, I, I, yeah. Meet him and you you just know he's a really he doesn't need to do this. He's a top New York psychiatrist. He doesn't need to he doesn't need to do this. He isn't somebody just churning out yet another therapy. He he's actually found something that he knows he's got to get out there. And it really comes across the genuineness of it. Yeah, yeah. The 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 doctors, Dr. Uh, Ronald and Stephen Rudin, yeah, they're they're two of the most nicest and most I suppose most genuine people you can yeah, meet. Yeah, I'm not best. Yeah, yeah I you don't know that. And they're, and they, they're, you know, they develop something unique. Uh, and you know, the, the reason why I'm such a big fan of having is not only it's the results; it's the consistency of the results. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never come across a treatment that's so, or a set of techniques or a therapy that's so consistent in yeah, yeah. The for for my clients. You know, because there are lots of other good things out there, but having the consistency of it is, is quite remarkable. And that I understand because one of the things that drew me to future life progression was it was we, mm. we kept seeing things and then they happened, but it weren't the old fluke. It's like every time people see where they're living or their future right. husband or wife, and they would meet them. Or I mean, at three times I've moved into properties that I'd previously seen that I had no idea where they were. We consisted. So when you consistently get results, you think I'm onto something there. So Louisa said, I've recorded that session on focus band, Steve. I'll post a picture of the session averages. I don't know what that means, but hopefully you do. But, yeah, um, the, the focus band shows uh, a lot what's happening in the brain, the delta waves, etc. Uh, okay. You can actually see what, 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 what's happening in the brain waves. Uh, oh. yeah, so there's a, yeah, there's all these new technologies coming online that we're yeah. currently using now and having to really I suppose, showcase what's happening in the in the brain and the body. Yeah. But uh, if people are interested in the training, we have about there's literally seven places left because I, I, if we take on more people, I'm going to have to get a bigger hotel room. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> which, which seriously, I may have to. Uh, so if they want to go on to if they want to sign up to the training. Uh, go to my website, stravershypnosis.com, go to the Certified Havening page. There's lots of free information there about havening. Uh, there's videos, there's lots of client testimonials. Uh, I write a weekly, monthly blog, and there's loads of information with all the different havening techniques and some techniques you can, yeah. you can do there as well. And if they have any questions, they can contact me direct at info at haveningireland.ie. So and I'll put some information up as well later. Yeah, do post it up. That's brilliant. Then people, because people will be looking on here, and a lot of people watch this later when they're getting from work or whatever. Stephen, it's been an absolute pleasure. I feel great. I feel I do genuinely feel really good. So, so thank you for that. That was yeah. really nice. I feel good. Uh, I'm sure everybody else does, and this will continue to be watched. So, thank you so much, and we'll talk yeah, again. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It was a pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> Feliciana said, "Get a bigger room, Stephen." There you go. <laughs> I'll come on the training at some point. I think you and Yvonne are going to try out. Should you go on the FLP with me yeah. or her? She'll come on yours. Yeah. We'll definitely, because, um, yeah, we're fans. So thank you yeah. so much, and I'll talk to you again. Take care. Okay. Thank you, Anne. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in.